Hello everybody, it's Chris Westergaard from The Language House. Welcome to my series on <laughs> teaching beginners. In this series, I'm going to show you how to teach true beginners using an effective methodology that I created called The Five Points. I developed this after teaching hundreds of hours in this level, but more importantly from watching dozens if not hundreds of teachers teach beginners and really sussing out what was working and what was not working and putting it all together into a specific methodology geared for beginners. We're going to be covering that methodology in video number two, but this first video is all about your approach. Essentially 13 fundamentals that you need as an English teacher to be able to successfully teach at the beginner level. If you like this content and you like what we're doing, please do me a solid and click the subscribe button. It helps a lot. And for those interested in teaching abroad, do check out our TEFL certification course, The Language House. We run a fantastic four-week course in Prague. You can train with me and the rest of The Language House staff. You don't need any teaching experience. We've trained about three to 4,000 teachers on our program and we can help you out too. So with that, let's, um, let's get into video number one with beginners, the fundamentals. I love teaching beginners. I love this level. But if you don't know what you're doing, it can be incredibly unproductive and awkward for everyone. Teaching beginners is a completely different animal than any other level out there. And it really requires a different approach and mindset to make it work. Most native English speakers never even set foot into a true beginner class. And I would imagine that the majority of TEFL training and TEFL certification courses out there don't even touch this level. And that makes a lot of sense because it's difficult. Beginners might even be my favorite level because it really tests the skills of the teacher from lesson planning to TTT to eliciting and drilling to graded language and lesson structures. You really have to have everything keyed in to make it work. And when you do make it work, when you take someone who speaks hardly any English and in 45 minutes or 60 minutes, get them to the point where they can communicate back and forth with another student with statements and questions and responses, it truly is something incredible. And my goal, my hope, for this series is that you too can have the same wonderful experiences that I had at this level. Without any further delays, let's go over the 13 fundamentals that you need to teach beginners effectively. Principle number one is that I need to know exactly what I want my students to be able to do by the end of the lesson. So this is kind of coming up with a language goal for the specific class. And with beginners, what this generally looks like for me is about three to five questions that they will be able to ask and answer with each other. Um, we're gonna talk about this more in video number two when we go over the specific lesson structure, but knowing this, like knowing the exact words and the exact phrases and the exact tenses is crucial because everything that I do from the beginning of the lesson is going to teach up to this final point. Once again, we'll talk about this a lot more in video number two when we go over the specifics of the five points. Next fundamental is that charisma is a must. Yes, of course, you need to be charismatic in all of your levels, but beginners is gonna require a lot more. So you need to up that dramatically. We're talking about big smiles, friendly gestures, and part of the reason for this is that adult beginners, there's usually a lot more apprehension and anxiety when they come into the classroom. And this can be compounded if you don't speak their language or if you're choosing not to speak their L1. You really wanna show the students through your body language and through the way that you interact with them that you are a friendly person, that you care about them and almost be a little bit playful with it. I don't think that you need to teach beginners like they're children. I don't know if that works, but a little bit of a playfulness and a fun attitude really works a lot better with this level than it does with say some of your higher level students where it might not be as necessary. Assume they know nothing, nada, zero English. You'll do yourself a favor by making this assumption. So many teachers enter into their beginner class and they just 
use a lot of extra language or they assume that their students know some of the vocab that is naturally showing up in sentences or worksheets or, or everything else. And the problem with this is that it's really easy to go over a beginner's head quickly. And when you do that, it leads to a lot of anxiety and worry and apprehension. The way that I solve this is I really just assume that they know nothing. So every single word that shows up in my lesson, whether it's in a sentence or in a question, I elicit it and I pre-teach it and I go over it before I just put it up there. The next fundamental is Hardly ever speak. Beginners don't understand anything. Your TTT is going to kill you in the class with beginners like you've never seen before. A pre-intermediate student or an intermediate student, obviously like upper intermediate students, yeah, they can handle a lot of that extra language and they can handle that TTT. Beginners can't. You can't go into a class and just start talking and you really need to only speak when it's necessary. And I would also recommend only use the words and the phrases for the most part that are showing up in your final conversation. So for example, if I'm teaching the word by and they're going to be using that in their final dialogue, I don't want to use the word get or shop or purchase if those words are not coming up. If I just randomly use those, you know, just like out of habit, switching the words up, they're gonna get really confused. So TTT, you need to keep it low and you really need to practice this in advance. Build up your language statements slowly. I'll start with words and then I'll teach the statements and then we'll work on the questions to the statements. And eventually all of this slowly gets built up to the point when students have a lot of experience and practice with both the questions and the answers and they will be able to ask each other in real time these statements. But it needs to be done in a very slow and meticulous way. When I'm teaching, I'm going to be using a lot of visuals. This is going to be realia, props, drawing, pictures, miming, etc. Try to stay away from contextual explanations or definitions or teaching that involves a lot of language because they don't have that language pool. If you try to explain a word using L2, it's likely they're not really going to be able to understand what you're saying because all of the other words in the sentence are confusing. And as mentioned with beginners, once they get a little bit anxious, they tend to kind of stop immediately. So when you're teaching, it's all visuals, it's all props, it's all miming. Elicit everything. Everything needs to be elicited with a beginner class. Um, there's a lot of different reasons for this, but one of their main ideas behind it is that it, you kind of like take them with you as you're pulling information out. And if I'm not eliciting, it's really easy for beginners to get confused. So I will try to elicit everything. The words, grammatical structures, instructions, like whatever I can do to make sure that they're on the same page as me. So elicit whenever you can. Teachers, with beginners, you're gonna really wanna slow down your voice. Of course, you're not gonna wanna talk that much at all, but when you do talk, you have to slow it down. You can't speak to them like you would a B1 student. You have to go like half speed, basically. And for a lot of English teachers, we never really get practice speaking at a slow level. So I want everyone to try to speak like this. You'll speak slowly, but you'll also speak in a natural way so that students don't think you have a problem or something, right? Work on the speed, slow it down. Speaking of teaching, teach less. Try not to teach so much. I think this is one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of teachers make when they're teaching this level. Many teachers get up in a beginner class and they do a whole plethora of different words or potentially grammar points. But the problem with that is that it doesn't go anywhere. What you want again is to remember those three to five questions and answers and those statements that they're gonna be doing at the end and only teach what's necessary for the most part for them to complete that. Everything that I teach at the beginning of the lesson should flow through the entire lesson and we should see it at the end too. Don't go up there and teach dozens of vocab. It's just going to confuse your students. Again, basic principle, 
focus on usage. Next principle, teach language chunks, also known as chunking, I think it's a strange name. Essentially what this is, it, these are useful phrases that have a lot of utility and they allow students to learn and practice a tremendous amount of language without having to go over too many like difficult structures. So case in point, I will blank tomorrow, right? Like basic future. And the question for that would be, will you blank tomorrow? And they can say, yes, I will or no, I won't. But that alone is an easy way of teaching the future. And you can see all of the different utility if you change the actual verbs that they may or may not be doing. Um, and then the times, it might be tomorrow, it might be next week, it might be next year. But even in a short amount of time, you can teach and practice a tremendous amount of language that your students will find useful when they leave the classroom. Next fundamental, error correct. Your students, a lot, wait. This is a contentious idea with a lot of educators, with many educators feeling that you shouldn't error correct beginners too much because it kind of stifles their confidence and their ability to experiment. In my own experience and my own philosophy is that this is simply not true. If you can error correct correctly, do it, do it a lot, because this is the time when we're developing a base. And if we can get the students to use the right structures in the beginning, it's a great platform for them to move forward. And what I've seen personally is that when students know that they're saying it correctly, they tend to speak more. <laughs> you know, they tend to communicate more. They tend to feel better about their own use of English because they know that it's right. And if they don't think that they're sp speaking correctly or if they think that they're speaking in poor grammar, they don't want to communicate as much. So my own philosophy with error correction is correct a lot. Get it right in the beginning and that will save you a lot of time down the road when you have to break up these mistakes again. Teach contractions on day one. This is kind of like what we talked about with error correction with a lot of teachers not really even teaching or pushing contractions. I personally disagree. I think you should be teaching contractions to your beginners at day one. So I might write up something like, I am Chris, but then I'll immediately use I'm and I'll get them to do it for any contraction that will come up in the lesson. Part of the reason for this is that we use contractions in natural English, so why wouldn't you teach that to beginners right in the beginning? And number two, it sounds a lot better. And you'll be amazed that when you push contractions, they immediately just sound much better. So push contractions right in the beginning. Final one, is that it? Are we done with the 13 uh, fun fundamentals? Last one is to drill and study to death. If you look at a regular activation setup, like an ESA setup for a, an intermediate or an advanced student, you'll have like your intro phase, right? And then you'll have your study phase and then you'll have your activation or your production phase. In those levels, you really don't need a tremendous amount of study, right? Like, especially with advanced students, like you can briefly go over something, even if you wanna do that, and they can go right into an activation. Your beginners are gonna require a tremendous amount of drilling, studying, practice, whatever you want to call it. Well, I'll go over these techniques in video num number two, but the biggest mistake that I see with new teachers is they don't spend enough time practicing the, the material. Students need to be able to say the word correctly, to identify the word correctly. They need to be able to write and spell the word correctly. Then they need a lot of practice in being able to form statements with the word, you know, and then they need to practice the question and asking the question and then asking the question and then giving the statement and then asking multiple questions and giving multiple statements and working on the negative and all of these other things. And if you don't spend time, like a lot of time, practicing this, it all falls apart. And I think this is where a lot of teachers make the most mistakes. So I always say drill to death, practice things to death, study things to death. And when it's dead, do it again. <laughs> right? So thanks again, everyone, for paying attention to video number one. I'm always amazed that you watch these videos with like Lord of the Rings out there and Game of Thrones and all these other great shows. You're watching me. It's an honor. 
We're gonna be headed into video number two in a week or so. I'll try to get it done soon where we'll be going through the five points. So I'm gonna take you through like every single thing that I do with a beginner lesson. But these points, these fundamentals are really important. So see ya.